yeah, I sort of ask, want to ask you a question about yeah. that because a lot of times artists will ask me, should I put my best track out? For, I have nothing on Spotify or on the platform. Should I put my best track out first? You know what? That's that's an interesting one because it's your best track now, but will you do a better track the next time? I I say if you are stoked on a song, don't sit on it. Put it out. Let's say that your end goal is that you want to be signed with a major, you want a publisher, you you want all of that. There's nothing stopping you still putting that song out yourself. And if if it gets the attention of somebody, the worst thing that could potentially happen is they come to you and go, we want to offer you this deal. We love the song. Do you like the deal? Yes. Okay. Take the song down right now and we're going to put it back up in two weeks or something. You know, it's really, there's no reason why you should sit on music. There's nothing that you need to be waiting for, especially in those early stages. And if you've got a song that you feel that strongly about, you need to put it out so people can discover it. Then what happens is you just keep creating, you keep going. I mean, if I were to look back on songs from five years ago versus songs from one year ago, there's a massive difference in the production quality, the overall sound the the songwriting everything so just put it out don't sit on it that's my advice I'll, I'll tell you i have one exception to that um and that is if you are a new artist and you don't have anything up on the streaming platforms nothing you're just starting out a lot of times i'll recommend that you put out a track that leads up to the track that you think res you resonate the most with because it's all about resonating with the tracks as far as I'm concerned. So um, that I will sometimes recommend that just because the first track seems to get lost a little and it is a build, but it's not even first or second best. It's just, you know, if you have a, the str a really strong track that you really resonate with and you have nothing up, I, I sometimes recommend that. Yeah, absolutely. And that can work as well. And look, if you do have that really st strong track and it didn't get the results that it, you feel it deserved. There's no reason why you can't stack that onto a future release. Uh, as we mentioned, include that track in an EP or attach it to the next single as the second track. Obviously, if you've already submitted to editorial, you've missed that opportunity. But what may happen is people go and listen to this new EP that you've put out, they hit play, and your new song drove them there and they go and they listen to the previous releases that are included on that EP as well. Oh, yeah. I do that all the time as a curator. Yeah. When I'm looking for music for my radio show, sometimes an artist will send me a track and it, I, it, it doesn't quite do it, but I will get on one of the platforms, Spotify, for example, and I will just sort of scroll down and, and click and listen, and then sometimes I find something that I really love. So, yes. <laughs> totally. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... I've always been a massive fan of an album and I still am. So anytime an artist releases an album, people can argue albums aren't as popular now. They're not as much of a big deal. They're a big deal to me. I'm a music lover. So if there's an artist out there and they put out an album, for me it's great because it's anywhere from 50 to 80 minutes where I can go for a long car drive or I can go for a long walk and they can take me on a journey with their music. And albums tell a story. You know, there's interludes. Uh, there's, there's different types of songs in there. It, it takes you on a journey. There's different emotions in each song. I feel that albums are still very important. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do albums and I would never say that, but there's nothing wrong with releasing individual songs from that album in the build-up as well. And giving, giving those songs another opportunity in the album, as we mentioned, if you have that song that didn't quite hit the first time, include it in the album and you may be surprised. P people may discover it and it could just have a second wind. Great. So I'm just going to take a quick look at the comments on here again as well. So Ada and Alex are both very grateful for the responses on here. Thanks, guys. Um, if anybody else wants to jump in with a question, feel free to post it wherever you are. Uh, just to let you know, we are live on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, and Periscope, which is on Twitter. So you can comment and we can put those comments up on the screen as well.
Uh, obviously, if you've got a question, we love questions. So feel free to put those out too. Yeah, we can keep talking about um, prep for new releases because there are a couple other things I think that could be important. Um, and it all revolves around engaging fans and potential fans. And I, I think that a lot of times pre-save campaigns, for example, which I know you know all about, you know, pre-saves, many artists do know about pre-save campaigns, but really it's just, for me, it's a smart link that you can present to a fan that allows them to engage on whichever platform they want to engage on. And it drives them to the platforms. So uh, again, the platform of their choice, which is sort of fun because what if they like listening on SoundCloud? What if they like listening on YouTube? When or Pandora or wherever. It's not for us to say what the best platform is, it's what's the best platform for them. So pre-save campaigns can be um, really effective in easily helping to drive traffic to the platforms ahead of release. That's really all they're there for. And even using them after release, because again, they're, they're a smart link, they're just a way to get to the music quickly. So that was one thing I wanted to mention about pre-release um, countdowns work. You know, I always tell mm. artists, oh, listen, if you give away a car, you could probably get a lot of people to sign up for your Spotify or, or whatever um, to, to follow you on your profile, wherever. But the, the thing is you have to, and, and that's another reason to release music fairly often is you have to give people a reason to want to follow you. And it's the music, right? Yeah. That, you know, it might be your optics, might be you have fabulous optics and whatever, and they want to follow you, but it's really the music. So the more music you have out there that might possibly resonate with them, the better. So I wanted to mention those things and a couple of other things about prepping for releases. And, uh, you know, we keep saying this, but make as much noise as possible prior to release. Ah, here's the other thing. Make sure your profiles are all filled out on all of the streaming platforms. This is good practice anyway, good form, but uh, make sure your bio's up to date and that you have photos and that you have links to your uh, socials um, wherever you can add those to any of these, uh, any of both the digital streaming platforms, but also any place else. There's so many other sites like Bands in Town and, and um, lots of other sites that you can, I can't think of right this second, that you can go to and make sure you've got everything up to date before you release it. That can help as well. And what else? What else can we talk about here as far as release? Again, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd ask people to engage their family and friends and ask them favors. So it's like go out to your mailing list hopefully you have one um, and go out to your mailing list and say, Hey, will you do me a favor? It would really mean a lot to me if you take a minute and click on this link and follow me wherever you like to listen. You know, that will help me to make revenue on my music. I mean that, I think a lot of times um, fans don't understand what the ecosystem is. They don't really have a reason to know anything about it. And they don't even know that you make money on your music when it's listened to on the streaming platforms. So I, th I think you have to help them to understand this is, you want to make a living off your music. That might be your goal. Tell them what your goal is, you know, have a goal. So if you've got a hundred fans, make your goal 200 fans. You know, if you've got 10,000 fans up at 20% or, or whatever it is, those can, those things can be helpful too. Definitely. And if you, the more people you tell about your goals, the more people that can hold you accountable as well and say, hey, you're hitting that goal, what's happening? Uh, obviously, if your goal is to get followers, it's, um, it's, a little, it's a little bit different, especially at the start. But, you know, what's some of the goals that you've seen from artists that you've worked with, whether a goal you set for them yourself or uh, a goal that the artist came to you with and said, hey, I really want to achieve this, can you help me? Yeah, there are a couple of things to say about that. Um, first is we like to see, we think a three to 5% in, increase in artist profile followers is healthy on a monthly basis. That's arbitrary, but that seems to be healthy. That seems to say that fans are engaged. So a lot of times we'll have the artists understand that that's a goal 
So if the artist is down at 1%, that might mean that they're not engaging enough with their fans. It's really just an indicator, right? It's like, okay, listen, your fans are increasing by about 1% a month. Usually we see about a 3 to 5% increase. So maybe look at what more you can do. And usually when we see that, it, it, it actually makes sense. The artists who only have a 1% following are not active on socials, for example. So, so that can help uh, happen kind of thing. The other thing is the, uh, the other way around, which is not to pay for, and I know you say this, but not to pay for streams or followers, meaning not to go out and buy fake followers. It doesn't, it, it just, it sort of muddies the water. So when I look at an artist, there, there are lots of indicators that we look at. Um, but when we look at an artist's metrics and we look at their number of followers and their monthly listens and their total streams um, on all of their tracks, it can be very obvious when someone has gone out and tried to buy something just to make themselves look at better. I mean, there's something to be said for looking better than you are. But it sort of muddies the water where we're not quite sure how now to present do you know, it's like we, 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 cause we're trying to pr present an authentic picture of where the artist is when we pitch an artist to the third party playlisters, you know, this is an artist starting out, or this isn't, this is an established artist you've heard of before, uh, whatever. And so be careful not to muddy those waters. It really, then it lacks credibility and it makes it tougher for us to present because then it looks like the artist might be just sort of doing things to get the numbers up, even though they're really not up. And also it's, you're sort of doing yourself a disservice as an artist because you're, you then don't really know where you really are. I mean, are people really want, do they want to engage with you? you know, do they want to, are, are they resonating with the music that you're putting out? And you sort of lose track of that to some degree. Does that make sense? 100%. Yeah. So as far as other goals, I mean, we worked with an artist who had a quarter and a million, quarter, one and a quarter million streams, 1.25, one quarter million, one and a quarter million streams. And I can remember being in, in uh, phone calls and meetings where the team was really anxious, like, how do we get to 10 million? How do, you know, how do, how do we get beyond a million? And that artist now has 50 or 60 million streams total on their profile. So how did they get there? Oh my gosh. You can name a hundred ways. It's not just any one way. They were, they have a really active fan base. They were really engaged with their fans. They love their fans. They consistently put out new music. They consistently pitched it in any way possible to anybody who would listen at the DSPs and anywhere. They just got really creative about doing that and they got really connected that way. There were just many, many ways they did that. And I think that's the point. It can come, but it's over a lot. And, that happened over three years, by the way. That didn't happen in a month. And I think that's the other thing to really address is expectations of how quickly things can happen. Um, it can take months just to get past that awful less than a thousand streams um, that you can see um, on Spotify and the small numbers you'll see on Apple and Pandora. It just is a build. It doesn't happen most of the time overnight. It can, magic can happen, but most of the time, it's a build, one by one, fan by fan. Definitely. It, it really is long-term. It's not overnight success by any means. It may look like some people achieve overnight success, but oh, the reality yeah. is they could have spent 10 years creating music before one of their tracks finally hit and then that success came. So really you could argue it was 10 years in the making. Oh, and yeah. the other side of that is... Once again, it, these songs that appear to just come out of nowhere with no announcements or anything like that, they were planned. They, they were planned for a long time. No artist just goes, hey, guess what? I just finished this song. I'm bouncing out the Ableton session right now and you can stream it in two hours. It's just, no. I mean, yeah, that's cool. That's exciting. They say that and people get excited and go, wow, I can't believe I'm hearing it right now. But the reality is there was a lot more time in there that you didn't see in the lead up to that and obviously the lead time between when they put it out with their distributor or they handed it over to the label who then set the strategy for them. Yeah, I quoted, there were there are a couple of things I've heard recently. I don't know how true these are, but um, that Chance the Rapper who's self-made, do it yourself, right? Yeah. Had 
a million dollar promotion budget behind him. I don't know how true that is or not, but I, I've heard that recently. And it really just speaks to this staging and timelines and the work that it takes to promote a track. It does that, that the tracks that you're finding on your stream, on the streaming platforms that you're listening to, they, they are, they're being worked. They're being worked. They're just not thrown out there. They are being worked hard. And um, also, I think one of Billie Eilish's managers said something about how they had this whole program set up. They had their timelines and their strategy set up to introduce Billie's tracks to the world. So, And again, it, it might have looked like, you know, she just put them out there, but it was way different than that. So all of this planning and strategic execution is really important it just doesn't you don't see it you don't see behind the scenes yeah and I, I like the the comment you made there one of Billie Eilish's managers right one of <laughs> you right. know it's um these artists once they once they get to a certain point they have a team and everyone has a different role and a different responsibility right um Right. And obviously for an artist in those early stages, you're taking on all of those responsibilities yourself. Chance managed to stay independent but choose his team and right. got to the point where he, he was very smart and obviously very talented and has oh, managed right. to maintain his independence and employ people himself uh, to go out and do the work. And, uh, you know, I've got to say, Pat, the manager, Chance's manager, is somebody that I would just love to sit down with and just pick his brain for hours because <laughs> the way that those two work together is mind-blowing. It truly is. And it's an inspiration for any artist out there, in particular independent, but just to show you the hustle and drive and what you can achieve once you have an understanding of what needs to be done and uh, who you need. Uh, that team could be delivered to you by a major record label or you could get to the point where you build yourself up enough as an independent artist that you can hire your own team and start outsourcing some of the work you were doing yourself to other people. Uh, like you mentioned, playlist pitching. Uh, you know, if you're reaching out to 500 playlist curators every time you have a new song, right. it could get to the point where you may have somebody else and you can say, look, this is my list. These are the ones that always love to hear from me. So make sure you send them first, uh, send them a copy first, give them a little extra love. And here's the list. I want you to make sure that you get this to them. And you've now freed up that much time and you see the value in that, that you can actually employ somebody to take, take that over for you. And it, it continues from there as well. You know, we've if you need help with bookings, you know, do you want a manager to come in and take over your existing bookings and take a cut? Or are you looking to employ somebody yourself where you have a little more control? So there's a, a lot of things out there that when an artist actually does the work themselves first, they understand the value and they understand how much time they will get back and what they could do with that time that they can start investing in themselves as well. Yeah, I think it's also understanding that it can take the market a long time to respond. And also, again, something I read recently about, um, and Billie Eilish is, I mean, so huge, but that something went viral on SoundCloud for her. Something happened, right? Something unex unexpected happened. Something really resonated. And and I think that if, I, I, I'm going to say possibly that that's what started, seeing that that resonated, res that happened, that that's how things might have gotten started, right? So as an artist, when you're really trying to work your tracks and things aren't happening as quickly as you'd like them to, which I would say is probably the majority of artists, right? If not all artists want things to happen faster than they're happening. You know, it's, here's the other question, you know, do you put out another track? What, what do you do? Do you, do you push that track? Do you, can, do you try to push that track and pull that track? into existence. Where are you in the ecosystem and what tools are you using to get people to find, number one, find your music and number two, resonate with your music? And again, there's no one answer, but 
sometimes you have to play around with that. Sometimes it's, you know, sometimes we'll send a track out to um, rock and roll playlisters and it's the Americana playlisters who are, who, who pick it up. We, we don't always know where things are going to happen. And that's, that's the marketplace. We're just determined to get it out into the marketplace and get it heard and get some traction on it. So just this whole thing about, you know, I like to say that I'd love to handle somebody full time just to manage everybody's expectations. It's just that there's just a, a path that I don't know that there are many shortcuts to of really just getting the music out there and getting it out there and having the marketplace respond. And it's all timing, right? Yep. Um, <laughs> can you imagine Beethoven? Do you know Beethoven was composing for how many years and if he thought it should happen in a month, right? And then he got really upset because he had less than a thousand streams. Do you know? It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's, it's a build. It's a build and it's word of mouth. And, and it's the sound and it's the market and it's what's going on now. So all of that, I think, matters greatly. So just keep putting it out there. Yep. And all of this work that you are putting in now is preparing you for right. if, I'd, I'd prefer to say when, but we'll say if it happens. You know, that's it. You, you may go, I've just spent 10 hours today working on this and I'm not seeing any results, but maybe two years from now, you go, wow, I'm so glad I put in that time all those years ago. I'm so much more ready for this now. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree. Someone said artists quit too soon and I totally agree. I, I totally agree. Yeah. It's just a long, it's a, you have to be in it for the long haul. You have to be really committed. And that's tough. That's tough. Resources are scarce for a lot of artists and I get that. And, and then there, there's always that question of where's the best use of your resources? And I think you have to make mistakes and you have to um, understand that it's it's a long road and it's going to be penny by penny, dime by dime, much of the time. Definitely. So I'm just going to jump in here and shout out a couple of people that hit us up just before. So posted the question up on online in the comments uh, asking people where they're watching from. Uh, so we've got... Ada Heston is tuned in from Brighton in the United Kingdom. Oh, hey. And Jamie Lane tuned in from Irvine, California. Oh, great place, Irvine. Yeah. Jamie, I'm, I'm actually going to be speaking at NAM in Anaheim this Sunday. Uh, so if you happen to be attending NAM, and for anyone that's watching that's attending NAM in Anaheim, California, I will be speaking there on Sunday morning on a panel on monetizing your music 101, but I feel like it's going to go from 101 to 109. We are going to get to the next <laughs> level. Some really cool guests on that panel as well, but this isn't a plug. You can go and Google that online <laughs> after this. Andrea, I would like to share some links on where people can find you sure. and more information about DPG Worldwide as well. Sure. So first of all, you know, our website's a great place. You can sign up for our newsletter there and you can read about our company and some of the artists that we worked with. It's dpgworldwide.com. So that's a great place to find us. You know, we, we, as I said, we help artists build their presence on the streaming platforms. Um, and we do that through uh, reaching out to user-generated playlists, cross-platform worldwide. So that can be really helpful. Do you know that can really, as I like to say, salt the pot, can really help get things going. And it also can help if you're an established artist who might be getting on editorial playlists even, for example, they, they sometimes only last a week or two, those placements, and you want to be engaged beyond that. So we, we, we focus on all of that. I don't know, do you have our Twitter? We, we're also up on, Twitter's a great resource, by the way, for the music community, you know that. There it is. Um, DPG Worldwide One, and you can follow us on Instagram, of course. Um, and we're DPG worldwide there. So I'd love to hear from anybody who would like to connect about the nerdy topics that you and I could talk about for days, which is really just about getting your music heard. What can you do in this space? It's, 
it's so new. It's so new and things are changing so quickly. I used to say, don't do what I told you to do six months ago. Now I say, don't do what I told you to do yesterday, but, um, <laughs> but, but it's all good. <laughs> it is. It's, it's changing constantly. And um, it's good. It's exciting. That's why I love doing these live streams because this podcast will be up as quickly as possible because of that exact reason that if I wait two weeks to put this up, some of this information may be out of date. So we want to give you information as quickly as possible. Just having a quick look again, there's more people that are um, shouting out on here, letting us know where they're from. So we've got Jasmine is tuned in from Seattle and Alex from Nashville, Tennessee. I love Nashville. Nashville. It's like a, Second home. I can't really say second home because Australia and <laughs> California. Uh, let's. It's another home. Absolutely. So Nashville, Nashville feels like a home to me, and everyone is so welcoming and so much going on there in the music business. Yeah. Right. So much going on for songwriters and for artists, performers. So much energy and education there. Mm. Lots of lots of great people in Nashville right now. Oh yeah, yeah. Too many, too many to mention. <laughs> oh yeah. Cool. Well, I think we might wrap this up for now. Uh, but if it's okay with you, after this, I might just keep an eye on the comments. And if anyone has any questions that we didn't get to in this recording, uh, the replay will be online. The podcast will be available shortly. Streamline podcast on all good podcasting platforms, and obviously jump into the comments and keep firing away with those questions as well. Happy to hear from you. And Andrea, as mentioned, just one more time, Twitter at DPG worldwide and the number one at the end, Instagram at DPG worldwide and DPG worldwide.com. Thanks, Mike. I really enjoyed nerding out with you today and we'll we'll have to do it again. (laughs) We are going to do it again for sure. Absolutely. I I have no doubt we will be doing something soon. I wish we could say what we, what we are potentially cooking up. Let's just say this won't be the last time you hear from us. Okay. Whether it's a podcast or another medium. All right. Well, live from Rochester, New York, signing off. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks, guys. Get your music heard. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andrea. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Bye.